Hey everyone, today I'm going to be reviewing the new Flat V-Cube 4. Oh, and note that this is not a sponsored review. I paid for this just like everyone else. Alright, and this time I got the DIY kit because the stickers on the old V-Cube 4 have worn out very easily. They don't seem to be any better than the stickers you'd find on a typical Rubik's Cube. So I got some Cubesmith tiles for it, and I'd rather not to have to peel off all of the stickers for it. It seems a lot easier just to reassemble it. And considering that there were differences with the assembled V-Cube 3 and the DIY, I decided it would be a good idea to also try out the DIY 4x4. Alright, so let's open this up here. First the core, and one thing I realized about my first V-Cube 4 is that the screws were screwed in all of the way. Now for the inner pieces. Now for the corner section. And it's just smooth sailing from here. Pfft. There may be some rough seas. And the last piece. Now time for the stickers. And I'm finished. And first impressions, the cube turns pretty rough, but that's the case with all cubes that are unlubricated. And just for clarification, the assembled version did come with its own lubricant. But as I was assembling this, I failed to realize that they gave me different tensioned springs. I should have remembered this because this is what they've done on both the V-Cube 3 and V-Cube 2 DIY kits. But fortunately with the DIY version, I can just pop off the center caps and I can easily replace them with the screws. And it's going to be interesting to see if these center caps stay on or not because it'll be a bit of a pain to have to take it apart and re-glue them on. But one thing that I noticed after I tensioned it was that one layer wouldn't move at all. After closer inspection, I realized that the bump here on the yellow side was facing the wrong direction. Even though that there's different sized notches on the cores that should prevent this, I still managed to screw it in wrong. So a good way to make sure that they are all facing the right direction is find a corner where the majority of them are facing away from each other. And then on the other side, they should all be facing towards each other. But you see this yellow one is facing the opposite direction. So with that, I'll make sure it's properly tensioned, lubricated, and broken in and get back to you guys after a few days. Now I've had this cube for several months now, and I pretty much decided not to make a review about it. But at, over time, as I continued solving it, I noticed that there was differences between my first V-Cube 4. And the stickers have seen a better day, so it really looks like that the quality of the stickers have taken a turn for the worse in terms of, for, for the V-Cube company. But then again, I always put tiles on mine anyway. Now keep in mind that the V-Cube 4 started another controversy, so if you're unaware of that, check out the playlist in the description where it starts with the review of this cube and then a few other videos as well. This video will assume that you've at least watched the review on this one before seeing this because I'll basically be comparing the two. Now when I first started solving this, it did not seem nearly as good as the first VQ4 that I got here. Now over time for it to break in, it's gotten better. But for my cube at least, it hasn't gotten up to the quality of the pillowed V-Cube 4. It just doesn't seem to turn as smoothly as the other one. This was actually fairly surprising to me because they wouldn't have had to change the molds too much to make them. But don't get me wrong, it's still a good cube, but I'm pretty willing to say that the Shang Shao is unfortunately better than the V-Cube 4. But I'm still willing to say that the pillowed version is as good as the Shang Shao. Now one thing that I've noticed since the last review is that there's a slight little click underneath the centerpieces where you know that bump is kind of hidden under there. And if you hit it just right, it'll actually make a clicking noise. There we go. So you'll notice it that when you divide this slice down a little bit and then turn one of the outer layers, you'll get that clicking. Now on the pillowed version, I never noticed this while solving it, so that's why I didn't really bring it up, but it seems to be a little more prevalent in the flat version. I would assume because that there's the center pieces have to be closer to the core. See here in the pillowed, we have a lot of thickness below, so there's a lot of room for those bumps, but this one, they kind of seemed almost constrained because, because the center pieces are so much closer to it. So it's a much more prevalent click, and I have noticed it while solving it. 
but really it's not gonna affect your times. It's just kind of there, and once you get used to it, you won't even think about it. Now, one advantage I found over these cubes, over the Shang Shao, is their inner layer slices. They are very smooth. Now, unfortunately, I don't have the Shang Shao with me anymore to compare it, but the Shang Shao had trouble catching on the inner core alignment mechanism. You remember that those, there were bumps sticking out of the core, and those would get caught. But these seem to be very smooth on the V-Cube 4 especially on the pillowed version. As for corner cutting, as you probably remember, it's very graceful, pretty smooth, and it comes close to that on the flat version. There we are. So yeah, the flat one, I've tried lubricating it multiple times, but I haven't just seemed to get it up to the quality of the pillowed version. Now, whether or not that's the case with all the cubes is, is hard to say, considering that these are expensive cubes and I'd rather not have to get more simply to compare. But I think it would be a safe assumption to say that the pillowed one is generally better than the flat one. But that poses a problem considering that the pillowed one isn't allowed in any competitions while the flat one is. I would certainly recommend getting this one as your main speed cube because it's the most legitimate cube out there. But that's going to be a call that you guys are going to have to make. Now in the DIY version at least, the center caps can easily be popped off. So let's see if the center caps can hold up to a nice good firm drop on the floor. <laughs> so yes, you will definitely have to be gluing down these caps. And when you go to glue those caps down, I would highly recommend you take the cube apart first because you're just gonna get glue all over the other pieces. Okay, so now I'm gonna finish up this review with a solve. That'll give you an accurate comparison, or an accurate uh, whatever, <laughs> whatever the word is on how it works. Okay, do white first. Okay, messed up a little bit on the centers. There we go. Edge pairing. Not the fastest is at edge pairing, but I get through it. Oops. There we And there we are. So yes, this is a pretty decent 4x4. I'll be honest and say that it's not the best 4x4 out there, but it's definitely the one that you should be getting. Well, if you guys found this review helpful, you can check out some of the other reviews I've made in this playlist right here, or you can even subscribe below to be notified of future videos. Thanks for watching.